Okay. okay, so second presentation today. So Josh is going to tell us about modalities. Questions, guys. Questions, questions, questions. All right. Think about them. Josh, all yours. All right. I did my project on therapeutic modality use by athletes and whether more is better. Why I chose this topic, um, growing up in athletics, I've always been interested in improving as an athlete. And as I started club volleyball, I realized the recovery stage was very important to that. Um, playing in tournaments that last three days a week and playing four to five games a day, your body takes a beating. And um, I wanted to learn how to keep my body at a high competitive level. My mentor for this project was Trayvon Partlow. He's a manager and head trainer at the NST facility in Twinsburg. He attended the University of Akron and became a certified athletic trainer. He's also certified in International Sports Science Association, which allows him to be a personal trainer. So what is a modality? It's any physical agent applied to produce therapeutic changes to biologic tissues. They are used to reduce or stop the pain completely and promote healing. They fall into five types, thermotherapy, cryotherapy, mechanical, electrical, and pharmacological. Thermotherapy, um, this is the use of heat in medicine to relieve muscular pain or tightness. It causes vas vasodilation, which increases oxygenated blood flow and promotes healing. Some examples of this would be a hot cloth or a towel, a heating pad, hydrocolator packs, topical ointments, or ultrasound. Topical ointments, these are ointments applied to skin that cause a heating or cooling effect. Um, great things about them are they are easily accessible to all athletes, and some are now including capsaicin, which is an anti-inflammatory drug, so they reduce swelling. Um, they are also going to provide an immediate um, response to pain relief and they're non-limiting anatomically so you can put them anywhere on your body except your face for an injury. However, they only do mainly work by the placebo healing effect unless they include the capsaicin. So it's really just going to give you the idea that you're being healed when in reality you're not. Ultrasound therapy is another form of thermotherapy. It's the use of ultrasonic procedure to promote healing and alleviate pain. Um, this is using sound waves that are sent into the body to heat up the muscles, increasing blood flow. Um, it's good for targeting any specific area. It's very efficient for pain relief. However, it's not very common, and athletes aren't going to have access to this unless they um, can attend a facility that has the machine. And ultrasound phonophoresis is a treatment available, and it's when they administer medicine through ultrasound without injection. Cryotherapy is another form of modalities. It's the use of cold temperatures to reduce pain and swelling and speed up recovery. It causes vasoconstriction, which reduces swelling and relieves pain. Um, some examples of cryotherapy modalities would be cryo chambers, ice methods, which include ice massages, ice bags, cold immersions, game ready, etc., and whirlpools. Cryo chambers, uh, this is a small enclosure using liquid nitrogen to drop the temperature to negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit to negative 150. Um, they're great for quick rehabilitation. The session only lasts about two to three minutes, and you're going to get a whole body cryotherapy. It's uh, going to relieve your entire body, which is great for after competition when you've strained all of your muscles. However, they are high cost. The machines are very expensive. So you most likely won't be able to own your own. And if you attend a facility, it usually costs $45 to $60 per session. Accessibility varies depending on where you are. And many are skeptical about the harm this causes to the patient. However, it's much like an ice bath, except it gets the job done quicker. Mechanical modalities are the third type. Um, these are tools or techniques that physically manipulate soft tissue or joint surfaces. They increase circulation or decrease swelling depending on which ones you use, and they also reduce soreness. Some examples would be massage, muscle rollers, massage guns, or compression devices, such as Normatec. 
Muscle rollers and massage guns. These are devices used to massage muscles and reduce inflammation. They're great for improving flexibility temporarily. They can reduce swelling and soreness. They break down lactic acid and they are available to anyone who wants one. They are adaptable, adaptable for most recovery sites. The massage guns come with different attachments that allow you to use them on different injuries or sore areas. However, they aren't shown to relieve muscle tension. Compression devices, um, a Normatec is what I looked into. It's a recovery system that are machines that fill up sleeves with air pockets to compress muscles and promote healing. They're great for decreasing swelling and targeting a specific area to heal. You can program the machine to focus on different muscle groups, such as your calf or thigh, or even your arms, depending on which sleeves you put on. Um, they're great for breaking down lact lactic acid. However, they are very expensive. The machine usually costs around $2,000. Electrical modalities are the fourth type of modalities. This is using electrical pulses to mimic the action of signals coming from neurons to targeted muscles and make them contract. A TENS unit is an example of this. It alters or interrupts the painful signals using the electrical um, signals. And if you increase the electrical signal, it causes the muscle to actually contract. Uh, this is great for muscles that have been immobilized or inactive for long periods of time. Um, it will help them gain muscle activity, memory, and strength back. And iontophoresis is a form of treatment using electrical modalities that administers medicine through the skin, much like the ultrasound phonophoresis without injection. Pharmacological modalities, this is the last type of modalities. They are very controversial. Um, they fall into two categories, ergogenic and nutritional. Ergogenic would be steroidal performance enhancing drugs such as steroids or non-steroidal ibuprofen, acetaminophen. And the nutritional natural substances, such as vitamins, these are great for deficiencies you have in the body. They should only be used as supplements and always avoid illegal and harmful substances. The future of modalities. So modalities are a treatment that always are going to be improving. They will continue to grow as they become more popular among people. Massage guns just recently became a very popular item for all people to own. And portable TENS units are new electrical stimulation devices used for more accessible electrical stimulation. It's this machine right here. It connects to your phone via Bluetooth and you can control how strong it goes and how long it lasts. My community component, this would be hosting a modality fair, very similar to a science fair where people could walk around and learn about what modalities are and which ones to use, as well as sample different versions of them and learn about the importance of recovery. I learned about various types of each modality, the benefits and disadvantages of each modality and how each one um, heals in a unique way, as well as future options for modalities which are never ending. These are my references. So that modality fair, is that something that actually happened or is that like your idea? Oh, it was my, I mean, it might have happened before, but it was my idea. I, and I was going to, that was one of my questions. I just jotted down real quick. Um, so what you just described as a modality fair is pretty much when you guys ever, when you get the chance to get to your first professional conference. So you have a, a professional education, at least how they used to be. You know? COVID, but you go to a conference like I would go to the Athletic Trainers National Conference, and then the vendors, so all of the companies that had these machines would be set up. And what you do is you go booth to booth, and they're trying to sell you, you know, their modalities, but at the same time, you're trying them all out. So I, that was always one of the things that I enjoyed the most was going to all of those and trying the different, the different things. So, yeah, that's interesting. What's your favorite modality and why? My favorite modality would probably be the cryo chamber. I've never gotten to try it, but um, I know a lot of professional athletes use them after games, and uh, I'd really like to try it. But ones that I have tried, 
I own my own massage gun, and it has done wonders for me after volleyball tournaments. After the first day, I'll use it when I get back to the hotel and have fresh legs for tomorrow. Nate? What, uh, what modalities do you use most from injuries with volleyball? With volleyball? I use my muscle roller a lot. I carry it in my volleyball bag. A lot of guys get cramps. I'll just give it to them to roll them out. Uh, yeah. I don't injure myself a lot in volleyball besides my noggins. <laughs> so, so Josh, what would you say from a modality standpoint? If I'm a parent and you're the you're the healthcare provider, and I say, hey, I want to get one modality for my kid, what what would you recommend and why? I think I would recommend the Normatec compression sleeves um, because they're going to be used for um, perfect after game times when you're sore. And um, other than that, like you already have availability to ice, so they could use that for cryotherapy. But the Normatex would be great for reducing swelling and soreness. Good answer. Jordan? Yeah, I what modality do you think is like the most beneficial? Um, it really depends on the injury the athlete has or soreness. Um, yeah, like if if there's swelling, you obviously would want to use ice and avoid heat. But if you're trying to promote blood flow, then thermotherapy. Mm -hmm. Alyssa. So, like, in your opinion, you said like the chiropractic, like there's some that are very expensive. Do you think it's worth spending the money, or like just use a simple ice pack? Good question. Um, I think it would be worth it to use the cryo chamber just because of how it can get your entire body the cryotherapy at once, limited to an ice bag, which could only do one specific area. Well, so that, that is a good question that comes up because, um, and it's not just with modalities, it's with strength training i mean i think people that i mean we have we have a facility we have equipment it's like why do i need to pay a hundred dollars a month to kind of do the same thing that i could have the opportunity to do here it's much like with, with the ice pack. and i think to help with that answer if you ask me that it's going to be you know what do they want what is convenient what what do they want you know because i would just say well you know would you think of going to Green to the crowd chamber and paying $75, $70 or $75 for one treat. And they're like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm a hockey. We spend $1,000 a weekend traveling with the team. That's nothing. Well, then, you know, yeah, but, you know, it's going to be individual. That's, that's a good question. Though. But I see that same thing with strength training and speed training. And it really, you know, you look at a lot of the off season stuff. I mean, look at your, your volleyball. It's just, just get touches on the ball. It's an organized way to play, right? Good question. Others? Josh, when you were looking at stuff, what did you learn or see that was new or different from what we taught, what I, what we talked about last year in class in this year? Uh, learn about more of the compression, like Normatex. I know we mainly focus on the massage gun for mechanical modalities, and I never really imagined that just squeezing your legs could be so beneficial. Anything else? Um, and I'm kind of pushing it. What's what's the future? Did you see anything like down the line when you were looking oh, at yeah. stuff? Well, with the portable tens unit, that was the most futuristic thing I found. I thought it was really interesting, and now they're just selling two little things that you put on your muscle and you can travel with. So I figured it'd go in that direction. They also came out with a new Theragun, which is handheld. It's way smaller. So I, the modality, everything in the, everything in the electrical world from a modality standpoint is blowing up now. You know, so the portable, transferable modality thing. So, um, I actually saw a watch that actually has an ionophoresis type of a, of a thing. The back of it, you put medication on, and then when it's time to when it's time for the medication, 
then it drives the medication into the skin through the watch instead of having an electrode. I mean, it's just crazy to think about this, but it's no different than, you know, you think about a nicotine patch that people will put on or nitro patches or things like that. Um, the, uh, um, what were you say? Oh, the clothing wear, modality clothing wear is, is you know, when you think of, you know, uh, I think Under Armour was the first that came out with the cold gear, heat gear, you know, the, the form fit for, for temperature regulation. That's blown up. You know, where they're selling t shirts, I don't know if you've seen it, you can buy shirts that you, you put them on and they're like mood rings, they change colors. So if you're warmed up, it'll It'll be a certain color. If you're cold, it's a certain color. Putting, um, you can put writing on almost like uh, invisible paint. So when the body temperature hits, the, the, the writing comes out. Um, which you look at, they could be used as a modality related related type thing. What else? Did you do any research about like um, those red light therapy things? I did not. Sorry. <laughs> so, explain that. I'm not sure. So basically, um, this is just something the one doctor I went to recommended after I like broke my foot. It's like a tanning bed, but it's like red light. It's like red light, I guess. You just lay in it. It's supposed to like help your muscles recover. Something about like your, the, like the way the light falls. So it's a heat related. Yeah. So it's an infrared light. Yeah. So basically, you're, it's almost like you're laying on a tanning bed. Yeah. You're getting the you're getting infrared. It's like food at a fast food place. They're sitting up there warming warming it up, waiting kind of what, what they're doing. Yeah, I just want to tell them. Like yeah, that. there is a lot of UV light. There's a lot of different light therapy things that are out there now. Um, a little some of the things like what Kayla was talking about yesterday with the sun. I mean, you look at those. Those are those are modalities. You know, anything that's gonna gonna change. What's ten stand for? Let's see how good you remember. Trans elect transmitting electrical neurosimulation something. I forget the T. <laughs> Anybody? Who remembers? Trans Q Transcutaneous electrical Transcutaneous neuro electrical neuromuscular simulation. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, just the modality, the modality thing in general, and really not even a question, more of just something as you guys move into healthcare, the argument is more and more ice and heat, the ice and heat argument. There's more and more people coming out that ice is detrimental to heal. It slows down the inflammation process, it slows down circulation, therefore it's slowing down the healing process. So that's something um, we talked about in the modality unit, but something to just keep an eye out because uh, there's a lot more research coming out of that. Uh, and, and the other thing modality-wise, there's there are going to be so many studies coming out of this COVID pandemic, especially um, relating with heart, heart and blood flow. Um, that it will be, be fun fun to follow. All right. Yes. Is the hyperbaric oxygen chamber still, is that passe now? Because I remember LeBlanc was using one there for a while. Um, I didn't do research on that, but I have heard of them. What category would that be, Josh? What do you think? Hyperbaric, hyperbaric chamber. It's just adding oxygen, isn't it? Uh-huh. So it's going to fall into that mechanical. Yeah. Okay. So hyperbaric. Um, we, I mentioned it a little bit last year. Um, NHL hockey, that's kind of their thing. That's their, they, it's, kind of, it's kind of an old treatment that's never left, but, it, but they focused it in an athletic. So basically, all the hyperbaric is, is forced oxygen absorption into the body for quicker recovery. That's, that's the idea. Well, I can speak from experience. I had a wound that wouldn't heal yeah. for months, and they finally sent me into this for four weeks straight, five days a week for, I think, the sessions for an hour and a half. Um, 
is based the plexiglass to they push you in and it seal the door like a submarine door inside and then they increase the pressure inside two atmospheres and they pipe in pure oxygen and as that says it just it forces the oxygen into your body <clears throat> and then as they bring you back down to zero atmospheres those oxygen molecules get bigger because they're no longer compressed and they do the natural thing that they always do and that's haul away the toxins <laughs> and after four weeks and that i my wound finally closed and nothing else that we tried was working so you can testify to the yeah. effectiveness of it yeah and what, ath what athletes are trying to do it for is to force that just as a general component not as a focus a focus component Josh, plans next year. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's that question. I was just going to ask, did you find out is more better? Because um, <laughs> he never answered the question. <laughs> um, not, not necessarily. It's mostly just learning about what the modalities are mainly used for and then using the correct one for that specific injury and not like using thermotherapy would increase swelling. So that obviously be bad. So not necessarily using more is better. So no. <laughs> yeah, and that, that is that's that's a good point because everybody wants to just throw every modality at it when many times it's just rest and time. Josh, tell us about next year and then tell us if you would do this again, what would you do different? Um I'm headed to Towson University in Maryland to study exercise science, hopefully become a chiropractor. And uh, if I did this again, I would look more into the futuristic modalities, like the phonophoresis, ontophoresis, stuff like that, because it's getting very high tech and fancy. Yeah, I saw I saw another thing I saw the other day. So like EKGs, it's like if someone's having signs and symptoms of, of heart-related chest pain and all that stuff, they now have little portable stickers that they sell that I can put on that I can put on their on their body and get a EKG read. Kind of, kind of cool. All right, anything else? Anybody online? Any questions? Come on, Jillian, ask a question. Mom? No? All right, good job. Thank <laughs> you.